whatever you wind up doing is exactly what you should be doing. And I have not behaved one single day of my life. Not one day of my life have I behaved, and I am fine. I need your help. I can't tell you what it is. You can never ask me about it later, and we're going to hurt some people. Who's Kyle we're going to take? Joining us on the Nikki Medoro show. Um, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, Kim and I were cracking up about the video that I had posted yesterday. If you missed the conversation, you have to go back and watch it or just go on my socials because I created a little short of it all. But David says, Kim has not been tent camping in 20 years. If you missed the conversation we had, Kim was trying to make it sound like she's up for anything. And it did not take very long for me to scratch the surface and say, Kim is not up for anything. She is my, she's my friend that needs, you know, the creature comforts, which I'm not knocking. You know what I mean? Like camping is not easy. It's, um, it could be dirty. I remember I, I have a picture of my son, Dylan. He was, I don't know how old. We must have just parked and he had a layer of dirt from head to freaking toe on him. So if you're not into the creature comforts, it's not for you, but the, the, the conversation I was cracking, cracking up and yeah. Um, and David admits that Kim has not been 10 camping in 20 years. Uh, glamping doesn't count. I've never been glamping. Um, although I will say some of the things I bring camping could be considered like an inflatable mattress back in the day when I was a teenager going to music festivals. I could show you a picture of my tent. It was the most pathetic thing ever. It was literally a pad and a sleeping bag and a pillow. And it would just be like rolled up in a ball. And I slept on that. My back aches just thinking about it. What do you consider glamping? Like, well, glamping now, I, yeah. I think like, you know, kind of the TP looking tent with a, a platform bed and mm -hmm. electricity and those types of things. <laughs> Or the bathroom, you know. Yeah, exactly. Bathrooms, definitely. Um, well, no, they have these um, tent cabins in yes. Boulder Creek. Have you seen those? Like at Big Basin? Well, yeah, they used well, to before the fire. They yes. might have all burned down. Yes. Where like the bottom, it's it's still pretty rudimentary, but they the they had, do have platforms for the bed with like a very thin little mattress on there, and you bring right. your own bedding. Yes. You're have still you in the been to, woods. Yeah. You still have dirt all over your feet in the morning. So, you know, well, that's camping. Okay. I grew up going to San Jose family camp. If I have any San Jose family camp people out there, I mean, I went there all the time. It was like our summer vacation with my family. And that would be considered glamping. I mean, it's canvas mm. tents. Yeah. Uh, some of them have electricity. Some of them don't. We never got the one, I don't think, for with electricity. The beds, it's a mattress, very thin, like, you know, uh, but it's on a, pla you know, yeah. metal kind of bed thing. Um, you know, there's a wooden desk. There's things like that. So I would consider that going, when, when, I'm when I was talking about with Kim yesterday was like camping, camping, like we're going off into the woods. No, there's no bathroom nearby. No, Kim's not going. And and it was just no. so funny. And I adore you, friend, because well, that, was, that was a great I'm conversation. I'm used to state parks where there's always, you know, there's a campground and there's always mm. bathrooms every... Well, absolutely. That's the best way to go. Come on. Oh, I like a bathroom. Dig a hole? But really? I have gone... I've gone digging hole camping. And that's Please. all I'm saying. I know, that's I know. Ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> that's not pleasurable. <laughs> well, no. great conversation yesterday. Yeah. We'll have more conversations today. I do want to touch on, and I know Kim will be following, you know, obviously the former president Donald Trump, his civil fraud trial yesterday, he made quite a few admissions that were really shocking to some people, but I still mm, don't did, ever doubt that Trump's going to get out of it. That's did all I'm he incriminate say. himself is what That's we want to know. Mm -hmm. That's the question is, did he say too much? Was he unprepared? Right. Was he unprepared for some of the questioning? Like people like Maggie Haberman and others are kind of shocked by what he said. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what sticks to Teflon Trump. Right. Or Teflon Don or whatever the hell you want to call him. Oh, Harry, with a five dollar donation. Roughing it is a holiday in Express without HBO or a bar. You know, that's right, Harry. 
-hmm. You know, I, I, I just, sometimes you just want to get away. I'm telling you, I like camping, but my like, ah, moment camping is when everything is set up, you put out the chair, you get out a beer, you sit down, you cheers, whoever you're with. And it's, and you're just there. Um, there is this, I, and I, I'm just thinking of it because we're talking about this. I was just watching for the love of travel. It's this, um, it's this, uh, travel company online. Okay. They are offering phone free travel packages where kind of you leave your phone at home no, or on airplane you. mode and you wouldn't even be, <laughs> but I, you know, they make a good point of, and we've even seen this with like big things like concerts, like Taylor. So if people are so focused on capturing the moment, right. the, the, the vacation, the concert, they take so many pictures that they, I think there was even a study done that there's a sort of amnesia that happens with events like this because you're not actually in the moment. You're looking at the moment through your phone. And so I, I would... I would not want to like leave my phone at home just in case right. of emergency, but I would love to have some forced separation. Just telling myself, oh, I'm going to leave it in the hotel. That never freaking happens. Right. And so I kind of like the idea. And that's what happens in camping because oftentimes when you go camping, you can't get a signal. Like you have to kind of go a little bit closer to the road or sure. whatever. You're and out so in the boonies. I yeah. like that. Or, you know, you can't be surfing the web. Maybe you can make a phone call, but that's about it. And I like that, just separating it. So my kids do this um, community theater. It's called right. Cinnabar Theater. And the, the spiel before every play is always the same, with the youth director coming on stage and announcing the production. And he always says, please put your phones away. We want you to experience this production with your own eyes. Yeah. We want you to take it in with your own senses and not with your phone. And there yeah. is something to that, to just experiencing it with your own eyes and your own mind and not thinking about looking through a screen. But if I want to snap a picture of a cathedral or wherever I am, yeah, yeah. then I want to snap a picture. And I don't, I feel like I'm a, I'm grown up enough to know that I'm not going to spend the whole time on my phone, that I'm not going to, you know, not experience those things through my own eyes, that if you know, that I could quickly snap or talk to my family back wherever, you know, however far I've traveled and say, right, you're not, right. you're not going to believe what I'm seeing right now. And yeah. then, then put the phone down and, and sit away. there in my own silence and, and ex absorb it all. Right. And that's, what's important. And, but what can also be so hard, you know, it's just, and again, and the thing that always cracks me up when I'm caught in one of these moments where everyone has their phones out and they're recording it, no one's going to watch that video. That video right. is going to live and die most often, unless you're like Jefferson Graham or somebody, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's going to live and die on your phone. There are so many, there are so many pictures that pop up on memories on my phone. Like you have that like wallpaper thing, especially my husband's because it works better on his, where I see these pictures of my kid. And I'm like, I would love to have that picture on my wall. Right. And it, I don't because it lives and it dies on my phone or on Facebook or social media or something like that. And so it sucks, you know, and, um, if I went on a vacation and it was a phone free vacation, you know, going back to maybe a good disposable camera or even they make these little Polaroids. My daughter had them uh, during Halloween, took all these cute little pictures with her friends. Are mm -hmm. they the best quality photo? No, of course not. But what it is, is it's not your phone and it's a picture you're going to be able to hold on to. She put it in, in the back of her phone case, her clear phone case. So she sees some of the pictures of, of her friends and everything. So um, I do want to address this comment from Lori, though. She says, I don't understand why you're equating being spontaneous with being up for anything. They are two different things. Doing something spur yeah. of the moment is different than being willing to do anything. Yeah, true. that's true. Unless I'm saying, okay, we're going to go on. A, and I was equating it to like a trip, like a road trip mm -hmm. or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes we only at the spur of the moment, you only have so much money, right? Or mm. we're going to go. It's not going to be necessarily easy. We haven't budgeted for, you know, a nice hotel. You uh, go where life go, takes you. Right. Mm -hmm. If we're going to go on a hike, right, you might have to dig a hole, right? That's what I mean. It's, I, I was using kind of the most extreme case with Kim, mm -hmm. but I do think if you're, if you're being spontaneous, spontaneous means I might like is exactly every moment this road takes me yeah. or there might be some hard spots. See, I think of spontaneous as there are some people that are planners that they they have yes. to do everything. Like I could tell you, Nikki, we're my going on a road trip tonight, yeah. right? 
and you would go, okay, give me five minutes. Let me throw my stuff in a bag. I'll be in the car. I'll be out in the driveway waiting for you. We'll go. Possibly. We'll see what right? kind of mood I'm in. But yes, okay. And and that might mean that we'll drive down to Monterey and stay at the plaza, the yeah. Monterey Plaza. <laughs> <laughs> if, Kim or, is, if, if Kim's in charge of the spot in 80, then yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's not going to mean a Motel 6. But it, and that's true. So I guess what I meant by spontaneous is, is what Lori is saying, is that I'm, I don't need a plan. You know, I don't need to be like, I'm a spur of the moment person. That doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to enjoy, you know, staying in a, in a flea ridden hotel or pooping in the forest. Like these are not things that are high on my list, but yeah, we get it. That's, (laughs) and and I think that's where we kind of diverged yesterday, Lori, is when, you know, when Nikki's like, no, 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 you mean, you, you you mean throw caution to the wind, stay wherever we're staying and wherever the the road takes you is where we're going. Yeah. (laughs) Katie writes, I have no problem leaving my phone home and being forced to look at endless pictures on other people's <laughs> phones. Yeah, I, you know, I just remember back in the day, you know, especially our parents' days, you'd have a party and invite people over to watch your slideshow of your vi- mm-hmm. of your vacation, right? And everyone's like, ugh, because nobody likes it uh, because they weren't there. And oftentimes, and I, I'm not knocking people that take amazing photos of landscape. Jefferson Graham takes amazing photos, but Jefferson Graham also includes people in the photos. I like people. Uh, If you're going to show me a bunch of vacation pictures, I want to see you in it. I want to see you doing something either silly or, you know, doing one of those perspective pictures where you're like holding up the (laughs) Eiffel Tower or something. You know what I mean? Like I want to see pictures. I want to see something funny. Uh, You've seen one mountain. You've seen some trees. You've seen them all. That's my opinion. Uh, A lot of people disagree with me. Oh, Doug, thank you so much for the $20 super sticker. Really nice. Let me get some business out of the way since Mm. you guys are being starting the show off so generously. I really, really do appreciate it. Uh, Click the thumbs up button to show your support for the show. Uh, It's free. It's easy. And we really, really love it. Um, Also, the super chat is what Doug and Harry and hmm, pardon me, so many of you use to give us some donations during the show. So if you look for the dollar sign, excuse me. If you look for the dollar sign under the live right chat there. box, I know I'm dying over here. Mm. Uh, you can donate a super chat, super sticker, super comment. And if it's live, we'll read it live on the show, of course. And then please, everybody, become an official Medorable and donate to our and become a monthly Patreon subscriber. Just go to the Nikki Medoro show dot com. The Nikki Medoro show dot com. And I double K I M E D O R O. And uh, you can sign up for any amount that you can afford one time a month. And can I also give a shout out that I'm wearing the t-shirt? I was really cold earlier and I was wearing it last week and I realized I had a sweatshirt over it. I'm wearing my new uh, Red Jack Saloon. Look at that. Oh, you got a sweet. Oh, that's I cute. I got a t-shirt. Look at got, you. I know, but my microphone blocks it. I was like, oh, I'm trying to give a, a shout out to Lori and Mark above the bar. Oh, the but the Red yeah. Jack in the San Red Francisco on Bay yes, Street. Yes. Exactly. So they're a huge supporter of the show. Go out there. You can get a Medoro Mule, a Kimikaze, or a Martini, and it supports all the shows that were exiled from KGO. So that's another way of supporting the show, and there's a picture of the Red Jack right there. And we appreciate everybody that supports us, honestly. We also take PayPal. Um, The easiest way to remember uh, how to send money to us through PayPal is just go to paypal.com, hit send money, and then put in this email address, the Nikki Medoro Show at gmail.com. There's also merch and everything like that. So we love you guys. We love our community. We want to continue growing it. So please, please, please make sure you've subscribed, become a Medorable, and share the show with your family and your friends. Okay. Um, Well, let's just touch a little bit. I just wanted to touch a little bit on some politics before we go to Kim's news. Did you hear what John Fetterman was saying? Now, John Fetterman is a Democrat, right, from Pennsylvania, Over the weekend, uh, um, apparently, he was criticizing our own governor, Gavin Newsom. Uh, He says during a speech in Iowa that Newsom is, quote, running for president right now, but Mm. does not have the guts to announce it. He said there are two additional Democrats running for Pennsylvania, excuse me, running for president right now. One's a congressman from Minnesota. The, uh, The other one is the governor of California, but only one has the guts to announce it. Wow. That's not helpful, Fetterman. Um, it's really, really not. And I know I've seen the polling, right? Oh, Trump's going to beat Biden and he's in a landslide going to be, be Kamala Harris if it's Kamala Harris. 
ever since Hillary Clinton lost to Donald Trump, I put zero stock in polls. Zero. Zero stock. I don't give a crap what the polls say. I really don't. I don't care how many people are at your rallies. I don't care about anything. You know what I, I, I choose to hold on to is that people will not reelect Donald Trump. I, I just hold on to that. I just, I, I'm like, he is facing so many different charges and so many different lawsuits and cases that there's not that many idiots in this country that would elect somebody that's going to be in jail. Hopefully that's what I hope. That's what, that's my opinion. My opinion, my opinion. Now, should I underestimate the, the idiots in this country? They can't seem to find a better Republican to run against Joe Biden. I guess not. I mean, could Nikki Haley start really running away with it? That's the that's the kind of the the narrative I'm hearing lately is that Nikki Haley is 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 becoming quite the contender. It's still early. I mean, I know it's about a year away, but it's still technically pretty early. I just can't I don't think I don't think that Fetterman's right. I do not think that that Newsom is going to run into one it's too late, people. Like he's not running for president. <laughs> I love Eric. <laughs> Never underestimate the power of stupidity, Nikki. I would okay, okay. This is why I, I hesitate to go all in with that mentality. If it was gonna happen, it would have happened in 2020. That's what I truly believe. I really believe that if it was going to happen with the brainwashing that was going on with Donald Trump, um, I feel like it would have happened. I really, really would have. Um, but yeah, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Uh, Vilma says Newsom wants to be around just in case. Just um, in case. I, it's not going to go to him, though. You see what I'm saying? Like, if there's a hierarchy and like a, a, a line, Newsom is not next. It's going to be Kamala Harris. All the, uh, do I think that Kamala Harris is a strong candidate for president? I wish she was. I don't. I I know, but I don't real. I don't. I don't understand the full on contempt for Kamala Harris. I really don't. Uh, is she perfect? Has she made mistakes? Yes. We're comparing her to Donald Trump mm. when we talk about mistakes, right? It, there, it's not even in the same realm. Two it's things. Not even the same realm. What? Yesterday, I saw a story that David Axelrod, who's a very renowned Democratic campaign strategist, says President Biden shouldn't run for another term. And I think when someone like Axelrod says that, President Biden needs to look at it and, and really it's consider whether that it's is too it though. Late. Yesterday, I was talking to Chris Merrill on the okay. Mark Thompson show, and he okay. said, "No, he thinks that Gavin Newsom is going to run this term. This term that somehow that Biden will bow out, and that Newsom has positioned himself perfectly to step right in. Perfectly. And, and not only that, he thinks he's he'll beat Trump." Okay, here's my concern. And you know what? I'm, I have a, I do not have a good record in predicting these things because I will always admit every single time we talk about this, I didn't want Biden and I didn't think that there was any way, shape or form he was going to be the Democratic nominee, let alone win the presidency. Mm -hmm. I didn't. Okay, so I could be completely off base. I don't think that I am off base on the fact that there is no way in hell we are going to have a Newsom Harris in the White House. There is no freaking way this country well, they, is going to have can't two Californians. They, yeah, they can't do a Newsom Harris. It'll be a Newsom someone else, a Newsom Buttigieg. You want to just Newsom... throw everything mm -mm. out. That's what I don't understand, yeah. Democrats out there. We are the incumbent. We're the incumbent. We have the war chest. And honestly, this is what pisses me off about this whole conversation. We also have the record. Really, what people are concerned about is the old guy narrative. Biden has done so many things that have helped this country, and yet no one wants to give him credit for it. But the fact that he doesn't speak properly, uh, that he is old, right? Like these are true, makes him not qualified to be president. Well, Trump is not that is, much younger. Yeah, I was going to say, he's only like three years older than Trump. It's, it's not ridiculous. Yeah. <sighs> you I know don't what? Know. It's going to come down to the it's fact. Be interesting. It'll come down to the fact that Americans will say, many Americans will say, listen, when I go to the grocery store, I'm being priced out of everything, right? 
I, I'm paying so much more for everything. Yeah, they're still going I, on vacations and they're still buying the iPhones and they're still doing all of that shit. Sorry. As if somehow that it. that's President Biden's fault. And I don't know if it would be the case if anybody was in office. I don't know. Right. It, it's not as if Biden controls every single price. And again, we had this conversation last week, I think it was, regarding people are still spending money yet bitching and complaining about the price of things and and all sorts of pent up energy following COVID. How many people spent buku bucks on Taylor Swift tickets and then probably walked right out and says, oh my God, President Biden's raising the price. And I think you seem to be doing just fine. Okay. People are still buying astronomically expensive houses. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to talk about the, uh, the large number of people that cannot, of course, but it's, it's a little rich for people to say that, that the times are terrible right now. The job market is strong. Inflation, yes, should be coming down more, but it's not. That's because people are still spending freaking money. So I don't know. I don't buy it. I feel like it's just this narrative that Trump and conservatives are pounding into our heads, even though the reality is not always true. The price of eggs is not astronomical anymore. Yes, groceries are more expensive. But uh, yeah, Kevin, exactly. The ga- the price of gas has fallen, but Biden will still be blamed for the, the high uh, cost of gas before. It's just, it, it's annoying. It's just really annoying. And I don't think that it's fair. I really, really don't. I don't think the criticism of, of President Biden is fair. I think that he should be able to run on his record proudly. I really do. Has he done everything right? No, nobody did. Nobody has. Nobody has. Uh, people are like, oh, well, this didn't happen under Trump. You know what happened under Trump? COVID happened under Trump. Do we blame him for any of that? No. We always have to take COVID out when we talk about the successes of Donald Trump. Why? Why do we have to take it out for Trump, but we don't have to take it out for Biden? Why? It's freaking BS. And it and uh, and I get the age thing. That's why I didn't think that Biden should have been the nominee to begin with. I wanted to go with younger blood, but now he is the president. And I don't find him to be as divisive as former President Trump. I think the reason why we are still so divided in this country is because Republicans don't have a backbone because Donald Trump is still in their friggin' ear. It just, it pisses me off. And I don't know what's going to happen. All I know damn well is if they're, I'm hoping and praying that there aren't so many friggin' morons in the Republican Party that think that Donald Trump, give me another Republican. Give me another Republican. If you don't want Biden, fine. But if your only answer is Donald Trump, you're a moron. You're an absolute moron. He is not good for this country. Did he only s- puts himself first. Did you see the poll yesterday, the the new polling information that in a hypothetical matchup between Trump and Biden, mm. Trump is ahead in some states significantly in at least four to five key swing states. Now, it's, it's early. Ridiculous. It right? is early, right? But that it could even be that way. Or that information could, I mean, that that that, that could even be a possibility mm-hmm. is is shocking. Yeah. Uh, now, Kim says, I won't, Kim C says, I won't vote for Trump and I won't vote for Biden. There are no good choices. Besides age, and I, I will give you it's a valid concern, okay? Besides age, Kim C and others, what don't you like about Biden? And unless you're a conservative, of course, and then obviously it's it's platform and issues and things like that. But here's the thing. It's like, if ever, if the only thing people keep coming back to with Biden is his age, it's not a good argument because Trump's old too. Okay. And I wouldn't say even in that good of health, right? You and, and, and focusing on the way Biden talks is unfair. It is completely unfair. <laughs> also given the fact that Trump says nonsense, it doesn't know what the hell he's saying also. So just, ah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, I'm frustrated. I don't think that people like Fetterman are helping. Do you think that Newsom, though, going to China and doing all these things is also not helping Biden? Because I feel like he wants to prop up the, the the Democratic ideal and the Democratic platform and things like that. I just don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't know if Newsom and, and definitely Fetterman wasn't helping, but I, I don't know if Newsom is helping um, Biden's argument necessarily. It, and it does concern me a little bit. Um, all right. Let's see. <laughs> Not voting is part of the problem. Now, Randy says, let's see. I'm going to listen to what Nikki says about Biden running or someone like Axelrod. Guess what, Randy? We all, we both have one vote. 
right? And now, yes, obviously, David Axelrod has a lot more political uh, experience and acumen when it comes to those sorts of things. And if you want to take David Axelrod's opinion over my own, that is your that is your right, absolutely, hands down. But guess who? Guess what? I have one vote, and David Axelrod has one vote, and so do you. And that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. I just, I, you know, and I don't think that David David Axelrod is helping. Um, Biden or or not getting Trump reelected either. I think it's ridiculous that that Trump, in so many people's eyes, is a viable candidate. Please, it just shows me that the Republican Party is totally a failure if they can't find anybody else besides Trump. And I say that so many times. They okay, can't even they couldn't even elect a speaker. I mean, come on. Look at how that how long that took. It's an S show, left and right. It is a talk. And I just read an article also that the Republicans have given up on replacing health care. They just mm -hmm. gave up. They're like, you know, I'll say this about the Democratic Party, though. All you Republicans that listen to me, I know that there's some of you. What do you guys do? What do you guys finish doing? What? The 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 tax reform? The tax reform that gave permanent tax breaks to the wealthy and our sunset? Middle class sunsets fighting for that middle class, huh? Repeal and replace never had a friggin' idea. The wall not finished, and obviously you've the Republicans and the Democrats have never been able to do something about immigration reform because it doesn't work. It's ridiculous. Roe v. Wade, you did that through the U.S. Supreme Court, which is absolute ridiculous, and most states hate it. So what do you do that's good for all Americans? It's ugh, it gets me so aggravated. All right, I'm done. I'm all heated. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. All right, what are we going to talk about after Kim's news? Um, oh, <laughs> just go back to these wackadoo conservatives. Moms for Liberty. We've talked about them before. It's a group of women who have taken, and I'm going to say women because obviously it says moms, a group of women who have taken upon themselves to try to raise everybody's children the way they want them to be raised. Okay, uh, and I'm being nice in that description. Well. They have called the cops on a librarian. I have the video uh, to show you. Uh, and then we'll, <laughs> we have some warnings out there uh, everywhere from your car to a plane to the lines at a very popular amusement park. Those warnings coming up. And then I saw this, but I also want to shout out Lori who uh, sent this to me as well because I was so frustrated by it. We kind of touched on it yesterday a little bit. How do you feel, Bay Area drivers, about all lane toll roads? No, I already pay taxes for that. All I'm going to play you a little oh, report from ABC Seven. Are they are they going to not put? Are they going to give me my taxes back then? Yeah, exactly right. Uh, and I love that when I play you this report, I'm going to pause it at this one line that I was like, "We are trying to do exactly what you tell us to do," and they said no. So we'll talk about that as well. A whole lot more. Again, click that thumbs up button. Show your support of the Nikki Maduro Show. And here's some news headlines. Now, from around the world to up your street, the Nikki Maduro Show presents News Czar Kim McAllister. Oh, I can see my light over here. No. That's not good. Sorry, everybody. Okay, <laughs> thousands of people have died as the war between Israel and Hamas stretches into one month today. More than 11,000 people have been killed in total on both sides of the conflict since Hamas's surprise attack on Israel on October 7th. Tensions over this conflict are rising in the United States as pro-Israel and pro-Palestine rallies have caused incidents on college campuses across the country. Speaking of which, a woman has been arrested for allegedly crashing her car into what she thought was a Jewish school in Indianapolis. Yeah, Police say this 34-year-old woman told them she backed her car into the building on purpose and mentioned her people back home in Palestine. It's a school. It's a school with it's children crazy. in it. It's so crazy. No one was hurt. And the Anti-Defamation League said that building is, in fact, home to an extremist organization that is anti-Israel. So that's interesting yeah. that it wasn't even what she thought it was. Exactly. There are some key races to watch today as voters head to the polls. In Kentucky, Democratic Governor Andy Bashir is up against Republican challenger Daniel Cameron. In Mississippi, Republican Governor Tate Reeves is seeking re-election against challenger Brandon Presley, who is a cousin of Elvis Presley, interestingly. 
Wow. Five presidential candidates will participate in the third GOP debate on Wednesday night in Miami. Are you going to watch it? Mm. Mm. It includes Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, former UN Ambassador Nikki Haley, Mm -hmm. Ohio entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy, Mm -hmm. and South Carolina Senator Tim Scott. Have we already heard what they have to say? Do we want to go in and see it again? The overwhelming (sighs) favorite, former President Trump, is skipping the debate again. That's probably because he has to be in court. I mean, that's where you can find (laughs) Trump, in court. That's, That's your nominee, Republicans. My God. It's true. In court. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, A trial date has been set for four of the five Memphis police officers charged in the beating death of Tyree Nichols during a traffic stop. Four of them have pleaded not guilty. Their trial is set to start August 12th of 2024. The fifth officer, Desmond Mills, changed his plea to guilty last week. Uh, an interesting story. More people are deciding to stay at their jobs now. Wow. White collar job turnover declining so steeply at some large employers that companies now find themselves over budget on certain teams and projects as well. Hiring slowed in October with U.S. employers adding half as many jobs as they did in September. Mm. And is this, is this a sign of the times, you think, with this one? Homer Simpson will no longer choke his son Bart The producers of the longest running animated TV show are confirming their policy shift on this one. The last time Homer choked Bart on an episode of The Simpsons Mm -hmm. was three years ago. He tells a new neighbor he won't be choking his son anymore in episode three of season 35. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) imagine having to write that line. I've decided I will no longer choke my son. I mean, okay. Um, What do you think about this? I'm going to I want your take first. If it's a okay, if you know the if, scene, like you know what it looks like, right? I know it's a cartoon, and I know it's all satire and comedy. Mm-hmm. But the image we can all, when I say Homer will no longer choke Bart, you see the image of him doing so, right? Yeah. And Bart's little feet lifting off the ground, yeah. and ah. Uh, and so, is that image then in people's minds, and so kind of condoning child abuse? And by not doing the choking scene, are the Simpsons saying, we don't want anybody to choke anybody and we don't, you know, we don't, don't want to put that out there into the world. Um, I know it, it's just a cartoon and I, yes. I understand, but it's also like part of our culture. And so if that's reflective of our culture, then do we want that abusive moment between father and son, you know, to be spread around? The gold star goes to Spencer, who is saying that I expect many people to say across the country, Spencer yeah. uh, or Simpsons are getting weak and woke, I guess. Um, it's not weak or woke to not want to perpetuate the abuse of children. I'm going right. to, on one hand, I'm going to say that. On the other hand, it is a cartoon. This, The Simpsons have been around for so long. Mm-hmm. I would like to see a correlation between children choking and watching Simpsons episodes to make any sort of line there. Now, do I think on it, on the other hand, they needed to project that they were doing this? No. How about this? Just don't. Like, why did it have to be mentioned? Do you think anyone's going to write into The Simpsons and be like, you know, it's been 20 episodes and I haven't seen Homer choke Bart? No. I think that's what happened. No. no. Yeah. I yeah, think I that think maybe somebody raised their focus about the choking. I don't think anybody would have noticed if the choking stopped. Does that make sense? The producers had to confirm the policy shift, which means somebody noticed, a reporter noticed, went and asked them about it because they just quietly took it away. Really? Mm Mm-hmm. That's stupid. Who? Okay. Somebody has way too much time on their hands. I I don't think I would ever notice if something like that ended. Although, let me ask you this. If the anvil stopped falling on, you know, Wile E. Coyote's head, Mm -hmm. I probably would notice. Well, if you watch that show all the time, you would, right. the open and close would be familiar to you. And you would um, notice if something Did they didn't... say what they're going to replace it with? I mean, because Homer still gets no. mad at Bart. No. Mm-mm. Does, is he going to stop yelling? Is is Homer going to stop drinking so much? Because it's, I mean, this is the yeah. road we're going down, right? Like, right. I mean, 
are the kids not going to be neglected? Like, is are they going to start to change where Maggie doesn't, you know, get put in, through the the conveyor belt to get checked out at the grocery store and put in the back? Right. I mean, how far are we going to go down this road right. when it's literally just a cartoon and we just right. laugh about it? I mean, yeah. whatever. Okay. So I can see it both ways. On the other hand, you know, if if art is reflective of society of culture, then is that what we want? to be representative of us, even if it's satire and comedy and humor, you know, do we want to find child abuse funny? No, we don't want to find child Mm -hmm. abuse funny, but at the same time, like, I also think that it's also reflective of some, not things, I don't want to choke my child, but you know, exploding at your kid, like, like parents do that sometimes. And so how do you, how do you amplify that, exaggerate Mm -hmm. that? For, for comedic effect. I don't I well, mean, No, there again, have been times is, where I would never choke my child, but there have been times where I was like, ah, right? This this is this is this mm. is where I start like moving, you know, more towards the middle. It's a cartoon. That's what mm-hmm. this is this is where I'm gonna this is my opinion. Yeah. It's a freaking cartoon. I don't ever think I'm going to I'm never gonna justify child abuse simply because Homer Simpson did it to Bart Simpson. Right. If I was gonna beat my kid, I was gonna beat my kid. That's that's mm-hmm. the truth. Like if I have if I'm a, a wackadoo abuser, Homer Simpson is not my influence. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so no, I don't think that I don't think that it makes it okay. Uh what I will say though is this I'll add this little caveat. I think the consumption of media in society has uh, grown exponentially that it is kind of a pile on. So yes, Mm -hmm. it's not just Homer Simpson choking Bart that can add to kind of the mental health problem in this country. But I do think that all of these things combined, right? The violence, the true violence, the news, the spreading of news, the speed in which it happens, the Mm -hmm. way it makes it seem like it's happening all the time, everywhere, all at once. That I will buy into. But am I going to just blame The Simpsons for it? Not, no, not at all. Not at all. Lastly, because it's memoir season, oh, Barbara okay, yeah. Streisand is out with her new memoir. Uh-huh. My name is Barbara. The Brooklyn native said for 40 years, publishers asked her to write an autobiography, but she kept turning them down. And now she says, I'm going to tell the truth and no one is going to believe it. Streisand writes how her mother was unsupportive of her career and never hugged her. She also writes about criticism about her nose and that people told her to get a nose job. And she was uh, even compared to a basset hound. The 81-year-old is adding, even after all these years, I'm still hurt by the insults Mm -hmm. and I can't quite believe the praise. Did you hear the story about how she took on Siri? Mm, That was a, was that a couple years ago? I don't know when it came out, but I just read the story yesterday about how she made Siri change how, I'm going to call Siri a she, how she said Barbara Streisand's name because she would say it with a Z, Streisand, Mm -hmm. and it's S as in sand. I was like, that's pretty cool. I mean, here's what I, and I think it was Barbara Streisand, although I know that there's other um, singers that have been like, do something to your face, your nose or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I think it was Barbara Streisand who said, I was so scared. I would never do it because I didn't know what it would do to my voice. Like, because it could do something to your voice. If you, your nose and throat and everything's connected, you know, and obviously your voice, it would not be worth it. It would Mm -hmm. not be worth it at all to do something like that. And again, we're supposed to look different. Like if everybody had the same nose and the same lips and everything, it would look freaky deaky. Like who the yeah. hell wants to live in a world where everyone looks the same? And yeah. I, I don't know. I think that Barbara Streisand not only has a beautiful voice. Um, what was the movie that she did with Nick Nolte? Was it The Prince of Tides? Is that what the name of the movie was? Oh, I was? love that movie. Yeah. Oh my god, movie. that was such a good movie. Mm-hmm. She was excellent in that. So was Nick Nolte. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I think she's a great actress, great singer. Mm -hmm. Uh, She has, you know, she's always been forthcoming with the fact that she has stage fright. Probably a pretty good memoir, I would say, if you're really into Barbara She's a total diva. Yeah. She's definitely a diva. Yeah. Well, and and definitely deserves to be one. Totally. There are certain people where you're like, yeah, you're fabulous and and you should be. I think my parents have seen her in concert. I'm not quite sure, but I think that they have. I think it was, it was a decade ago and she was on Oprah. And she had like three, two or three songs that she was singing. And each one, she had a matching microphone to her outfit. Ooh, that is deal like like, isn't it? Yeah, like a white microphone with rhinestones on it. Must yeah. have, and the long nails and all this. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, but I think it'll be an interesting uh, memoir, memoir as well. I'm only, I, I told you, I'm listening to Britney Spears' memoir uh, with Michelle Williams reading it. It's pretty good. It really, really is. is and it? you know what's funny is like, and I, I, I'm not a huge, I've said this before, I'm not a huge Britney Spears fan, but as I listen to music, I'm like, oh yeah, I know that song, that song, so I guess I was a fan. Right. Uh, but it's very interesting, you know, just her going through moments that I remember because I was of that age. It's really, it's really a sad, sad story. And even though Michelle Williams is reading it, you know, um, you you can see as she's writing it that she's well aware that she's not completely right in the head. Like she, she even admits mm -hmm. it. She's like, I know that's not normal. I know that's not right. There's a line in her book where she's like, that's the first moment that, that I know people started looking at me like I was weird. Um, and it, everything from her children to what, you know, how much she wanted to protect them to her acting mm -hmm. and not being able to remove herself from the sort of method acting of being that person. Very, very interesting. I mean, she, and she's making buku bucks on this memoir. I mean, she's selling yeah. it like hotcakes. It's very interesting. So that's what I'm listening to right now. Mm. So, yeah, It's interesting to me that she didn't read her, read it herself. She has an acting Oh, background. no, she does she's the intro. She does okay. a little bit of a... No, 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 no. She can't. You can hear it in her voice. There is no freaking way that voice can read an entire book. It is beat to hell. Really? Yeah. It's raspy. You can hear There's no way. There's no way I would want to listen to her read that book. Wow. And I'm not knocking her. I'm not knocking her. Uh, but no, her voice is very strained. And but Michelle Williams just sings. I mean, she's she still... hasn't sung in four years. Oh, wow. She hasn't sung in four. She doesn't want to sing anymore. She's not planning on, on releasing any other music. Wow. Uh, her voice. I'm not saying it's shocked. I mean, it, she again, she read an intro. Mm -hmm. I was shocked by the sound of her voice. Yeah. But Michelle Williams is a very good job of being Britney. Mm -hmm. And I think the voice that that I think that they that we want to hear. But yeah, there's no way. There is no way that Britney Spears could have read that book. Uh, uh too much. Oh, I wonder what she did to her voice. Just too much belting or too yeah, much. Yeah, like real I don't know. It's just it's very it? raspy yeah. and um it's not easy to listen to. It's not. Um and I'm not saying it was difficult to listen to the the small amount that she read. I can't imagine listening to this whole hours long book right with that voice. Anybody in the comments has heard it, you know exactly what mm. I'm talking about. But yeah, it's it's a pretty it's pretty difficult. I wonder if, I don't know if you can Google it. Maybe I'll, I'll try to find it, but yeah, it's not, it's not good. Not good. Wow. Yeah. Uh, well, that answers that question. <laughs> mm -hmm. I always prefer people to read it in their own voice. Absolutely. Yeah. But no, Michelle Williams does an amazing job well, at it. Well, especially if it's a memoir, but yeah. Yes. No. Mm. She, yeah. It's, it's, it's a good listen to with Michelle Williams's voice. This uh, report is crowdfunded, which means we do rely on you to support Yay. the show. Please find us at the Nikki Maduro show.com. Have you guys gone to the website yet? The Nikki Maduro you gotta show. Go. It's a great dot place. Com. You find everything there. It's not just the Patreon and the PayPal link. It's the podcast links. Yep. It's the link to the, the merchandise, the Nikki Maduro shop. It's all of the above. So check it out. And thank you for all the ways you support the show. I'm Kim McAllister on the Nikki Maduro show. And I'm trying to see if I can get the sound of it. Um, da, 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 da. yeah, no, I don't think I can not really quickly. Maybe if I could find it during your next news break, I'll, I'll look and see if I could find it, but yeah, it's not, but again, um, if you like memoirs and I'm not a huge memoir person, uh, give it a shot. It's, it's really, really interesting. It really is. Um, okay. I did want to touch on one more political story just really quickly before we got to, um, the moms for Liberty. You guys know I'm a huge Katie Porter supporter. Okay. I'm not knocking Barbara Lee or Adam Schiff. I just, I, I'm, my vote's going to Katie Porter. Okay. For U.S. Senator of California. Did you know though, that I think that, I think that Katie Porter might win now with this new headline. Uh, at least if people are kind of torn and maybe I'm wrong, but apparently, and I did not know this and I don't know why I did not know this until I read this article. Maybe all of you have, I did not know this. But he has a dual residency. And I would say he is more of a resident of Maryland than of California. Who? Adam Schiff. Okay. Oh, okay. 
So Schiff apparently is facing increased scrutiny over allegations that he's been claiming dual primary residences in Maryland and California for more than a decade Mm. and enjoying tax exemptions intended for homeowners. So apparently he has. Now, this is what gets to me. It's kind of the size of the home that gets to me. He has a 3,420 square foot home in Maryland, and he's had it for years. But he has it. He also takes the homeowner's tax exemption on his much smaller 650 square foot condo in Burbank, California, mm. and which he also designates as his primary residency. In 2017, Schiff paid his California property taxes with a check displaying his Maryland address. The only year he used a personal check for this purpose, that according to CNN. Uh, Evidence from various sources suggests Schiff predominantly resides in Maryland, Mm -hmm. despite officially claiming his Burbank condo as his primary residence. I'm sorry, if you have a 3,400 square foot home, that's your home. A condo in Burbank? A condo in Burbank? Mm. In comparison? Okay, but let's just let's devil's advocate here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's in Congress, and he has been for a while. <clears throat> and most of the time, you know, you go back and forth to your district to find out what your constituents think and have constituent meetings with your people in your district. But most of the time, you're in the D.C. area. I will bet that he bought that house in Maryland after he became a congressperson. Let me see. Let's see. And it, so, it was 2003 that he uh, he designated the Maryland property as his primary residence all the way back in 2003. When did he enter Congress, congressional service? I feel on like behalf I... of, of the people of Southern California. <clears throat> I mean, I just, a lot of them have, a lot of Congress people and politicians have property around Virginia, Maryland, Washington, D.C., because they're, that's where they are so much. Right. Right? And so, so he's been a congressman from California since 2001. So that's probably why he got into Congress, and then he bought a nice place after a couple years. In Maryland. In Maryland. A gigantic house. so much time there. So then and he so, lives there. Mm, well, they all live there, technically, right? Because we send them there to represent us. I'm okay, just so saying, you don't, you're not concerned. So there was this no. uh, this op ed in the SAC B, and I just want to read you the the end of it. This is and this is what gets to me. I'm not knocking Schiff. Like again, I really don't think we're going to lose when it comes to U.S. Senator. I really don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we're going to have people that are really going to work hard for California. Uh, I want to give credit where credit is due. This is writer from the Sacramento B, Robin Epley. Okay, this is what she wrote. How can these politicians expect to be the voice of their community? If they're not part of that community, Mm -hmm. politics, not unlike journalism, deserves people who are representative with the people they're supposed to speak for. True. And it's these kinds of small omissions, talking about Maryland, that add up to the voters' larger distrust. Moreover, it's sadly indicative uh, of a culture of rot that apparently starts at the top in D.C. and is permitted all the way down to our very own city hall. California has an inconceivable number of talented people who actually live in the district they want to represent. Let's put one of them in office. It shouldn't be this hard. Katie Porter lives in Southern California, has lived in California, single mother with children, I believe, in the public school system. Okay. I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure her kids go to public school. Do they go to school in Los Do they go to school in Los Angeles area? Yeah. Or did they go to school in D.C.? Because she's in D.C. all the time. Did no, she have to? No. I did think she, she have to? Did she have to move and take her kids with her? Because how are you in Congress and in Washington, D.C. all that time? I, I know you have to come back and, and talk to your constituents. I, I think a lot of Congress Let's people see. and mm. senators and wh- whomever else in government, they they all maintain residences in their primary districts where they're, right. they've been elected, and they often all have some place to call home in the D.C. area, whether that's a little apartment in the Watergate building or whether that's a big house in Maryland. But when you buy the that. condo in Maryland? You could make that argument, although if he's there, you know, so much of his time, or maybe if the Maryland house was a lot cheaper than California prices... Right. You know, maybe in Burbank, all you can afford, I think Adam Schiff probably can afford whatever. 
but maybe you know you're looking at prices and the 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 home price of the condo is the same price as the mansion in Maryland and you're like right. might as well yeah, yeah that's true that and that's a good point because it is I don't know like I don't I don't know how expensive it is in Maryland it sounds expensive to me but I don't I honestly don't know but what the average gonna, cost if we're gonna ding Adam Schiff for his you know his Maryland mansion what about where Feinstein lived what about where Pelosi has a a house in you know the D.C. area what about all the rest of them are we gonna that's say true. that's a problem. I don't think that's a problem. As long as you have your primary residence in the district where you're elected. Well, and the you... problem with Schiff is he was claiming two. That's the that's the accusation is that two he was primary tax... residences. Yeah, he was trying to get. Yeah, mm, he was trying to get the tax exemptions. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I and guess Randy's you make an excellent really, point of having he, to work in Washington. I get he disagrees, that. disagrees, but... Randy. And I, I get that you're disagreeing, but. I don't think you, I mean, I don't think I'm wrong on that issue. I don't, I'm not even necessarily saying I'm a shift supporter, right. but on this particular issue, again, I think they all have uh, maintained a residence in DC. Most of them. I remember AOC, remember she was saying, I can't afford to have a, a condo in oh, an apartment in DC and an apartment in wherever they make it impossible right, right. for someone who's actually poor to afford to represent the people because I can't, but where are you going to stay? Are you going to stay at the motel six in Washington DC every time you go? <laughs> That's part of the job. And you know what? Life should be hard for yeah. politicians. You're, you're supposed to not, I don't know. I, I, I don't knock yeah. anybody from making a decent living. You shouldn't get rich in being a politician. It, it clouds your judgment in my opinion. Oh. Lori says some of them live in dorm style living with yeah. other Congress people out of uh, cost. Yeah, if, well, especially if you're just starting out, you know, like yeah. a freshman Congress person or whatever. So I'm reading this one article as you were speaking, and this is from this is actually from today. Um, actually, yesterday. Oh, wow. OK. Katie Porter has been campaigning across blah, blah, blah. In late October, Porter rushed home to Orange County for a local campaign rally, as well as to do some fall decorating at her home with her kids. I mean, I don't know what that means as far as, you know, where she stays in Washington, but it makes it seem to me that her main home is in Orange County and that she's, and that her kids stay there. I don't know if she has like a nanny or whatever. Um, I don't know. I, I just, one, I think the whole tax break thing is, is going to bite Schiff in the butt, but, um, Oh, here we go. She says, every time I get on that plane to Washington, D.C., there is a big cost to me. I'm not there to make the cocktail party circuit rounds. Mm -hmm. I'm not there to curry favors with the people in charge. I'm here to make sure my kids and people like my kids have a better life, and that's it. And there are weeks that it feels like a fool's errand, and there are weeks where it feels like you're really making a difference in their lives. And I think my honesty about that is why California voters should trust me, that and I carve a good pumpkin. I think she's, I think she's more in California than than we think. But again, you make an excellent point. I think that these politicians have to split their time. You can't get tax breaks and you can't have a Maryland address all the time. Um, yeah. All right. I guess it wasn't. We can, yeah. So I think I'm reading that her three kids do live in Irvine mm -hmm. um, and that she spends close to 20 hours a week commuting between D.C. and Irvine. That's a con that And that is dedication. That mm -hmm. is I wouldn't want, if I was a kid... I don't want to. I don't want to live in Maryland while my mom's at work all day. Yeah. I'm, I'm assuming she has. I don't know if she has a nanny. I'm sure she has a babysitter. She has a support system. I don't know what she has. I know she has a, like. She always talks about the fact that I'm a single mom, so she doesn't have a husband, right? That's helping her with these kids. I don't know. She's got my vote. I, I love Katie Porter. I really, really do. Yeah. Um, but again, I'm not knocking shit. But you, you, they're gonna they're gonna hone in on this as a criticism and. I hope that the campaign doesn't go dirty, but uh, I can see that being a criticism. I could Did use you... it. I mean, I would use it if I was Katie Porter and be like, look, I, I'm here in California. I'm not knocking him and that he wouldn't do a good job, but I know what it's like to be a single mom living in a high cost state yeah. like California. It would be incredibly hard to have ki kids of school age, younger oh, kids God, yeah. while you were in Congress. As a matter of fact, I just came upon, ac uh, across a story about moms in Congress. Okay. Did you know that Nancy Pelosi delayed her entry into politics until most of her five kids were yeah. adults? Yep. That she didn't run for the representing her San Francisco district until her youngest kid was about to graduate from high school. Yeah. Because yeah. she knew. Because yeah. she knew. And, you know, how many times, and I'm not saying the dads aren't dedicated. Mm -hmm. How many times do you see that line with dads? Not saying it never happens. I'm not saying mm -hmm. that. 
but it's always the narrative for the woman. And this is why, again, and I don't want to go on a tangent about Roe v. Wade and whatever, but that is why it should be a woman's choice because women have to make choices like this all the time, whether it's something innate in us in which we want to stay home, uh, whether there's no choice, like in Katie Porter's case where she is a yeah. single mom, like it's these sorts of, of, of decisions that women have to make. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. It's really, inter so we'll see what happened. I'm very interested in this, uh, U S Senator of California race. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll see who we get. We will definitely see it. And I'm not, I'm not saying that Barbara Lee has no shot at it, of course, but she is behind, uh, Schiff and Porter. And that's why I'm really focusing on Schiff and Porter here. Um, okay. Moms for Liberty. I don't get it. I really don't. Uh, we talk about the, the banning of books and we've talked about it so many times. Uh, well, it's happened again. Uh, two members of Moms for Liberty, which apparently includes a guy, have reported several California li librarians to law enforcement. They're claiming that librarians have committed felonies by distributing pornography to minors. Now, here is some body cam footage. Uh, and this is in Florida, though. So from Santa Rosa County, from the Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office. And I don't understand how this makes things better by doing stuff like this. So here's a little bit of that video. The only, the only reason we're here, uh, the crime is being committed. It's a third degree right. felony. We'll work on that. Okay. And we got the evidence that is. So that's why we're we'll looking for Okay. You know, and you see where I'm coming from? I do get what you're saying. Um, uh, I know. I know the procedure. The governor says this is child pornography. It's very, it's a serious crime. It's just as serious as if I handed a Playboy no. to her oh my God. right now, right here in front of you. It's just as serious, according to the law. So she's quoting DeSantis, of course. Do you think that in the, in the book that she had, I think, had to do with gargoyles? <laughs> like it was, it was one of these types of, of books. Do you think... Handing a book that has any sort of sex in it, whether it's between gargoyles or humans or whatever, okay? Any mention of sex, S-E-X, to middle or high schoolers is the same as handing them a Playboy. Because this is where, <laughs> this is where I come, I, and I know that people always make this jump and it's a common, you know, rebuttal to this nonsense. So then you would never hand the Bible to a child. You never, the Bible has sex in it, right? The, the Bible has murder. The Bible has rape. The, the Bible has oh, literally every sin you can think of is in the Bible. Okay. So do you think that any sort of mention of S E X should not be allowed in school libraries. Now, again, I'm not talking about public libraries, okay? Because mm -hmm. that's ridiculous. Uh, but school libraries, should we just keep it above the covers, I guess they say. Um, because I think this is going... <laughs> oh, excellent point. Well, didn't... Yeah, I guess you're right. Chris is like, Playboy never had any sex in it. They had body parts in it, right? But not... You're not seeing anybody have sex. You're and seeing nudity. And I would argue, are words, are words sex? Are words pornography? I mean, words can have the same effect as, you right? Know, but are they? I'm audio not showing you can an have image. the same effect as visual, right? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not showing you an image of sex. No, but you could get turned on by words. And is that what they're afraid of? I guess so. And uh, but I would argue that especially in teenage years trying to restrict all i mean you don't you're not going to hand your kid porn but, but do if, you think that a book it with words no pictures just describing something could be pornography so i think in there are different situations so there may be a book out there where a main character describes being abused as a child mm -hmm. and perhaps the reader didn't realize that was abuse and sees themselves in that character and thinks, oh my God, I, 
I too went through this right this with this character and I didn't realize it was a problem and then finds you know some type of uh, you know realization from that you, you people learn all kinds of things from books so I don't necessarily think that you restrict every single thing do I think that we should you know publish the what is it the Playboy or Hustler magazine, one of those has like right. a the letters Hustler. to the editor where it's all well, like the sexy all time. Yeah, books. yeah, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. What I, we, I don't think we publish that and put it in the library, but if somehow sex or something sex related is part of a story and it's not graphic like a romance novel, like trash, but it's actual real literature, right? Then what if it is I, trash? Well, I don't think I would, you know, put the romance novel in the high school section where like you why first he trailed his finger up my thigh and then i know he, i don't think that i and i, I could be wrong know, i don't even think that know. they do have that section at schools they don't i, I wouldn't think they but would. there are books that do and mm-hmm. I, I i'm just going to use the word graphically because they talk about you know mm-hmm. body parts or the actual act in it mm-hmm It's just we're so puritanical with this whole entire thing. There are words as as dirty as it's going to get is as dirty as your mind wants to get. Mm -hmm. And I always and I still maintain. And so uh, to just add a caveat to this whole story, apparently there's another group, not Moms for Liberty, but Stop Moms for Liberty. And so it's like these two groups that are just coming out. And I always default to this. If you don't want your child checking something out at a school library mm-hmm. added to the things that they can't do. I, I don't understand how hard this is. There's mm-hmm. I, every time at the start of the school year, there's a stack of friggin' papers that I have to sign, you know, right. uh, the, the technology code and, uh, you, you can take pictures of my kids or you can't take pictures of my kids for the yearbook. All of these, these rights, these parental rights that we agree to or don't agree to. Mm-hmm. So why can't, the library be one of them that yes uh if you want to check out a book the, the i want to know what the title is before you can check out that book if it's not yeah. for school right so if, if it's library time and you're going to the library it's attached to your student id so it's very simple uh we are going to send an email this book will be uh, available to you tomorrow or in two days after your parents give the okay and you can come get this book done easy peasy why is that so difficult you know what I'm going to say? Parents don't want to put in the freaking work. They don't. They don't want to read the book. They don't want to know what the book is about. They don't even want to have the conversation with their children of why they want to check out that book. They don't even want to bridge the yeah. topic it's because true. they're lazy. They're lazy parents. Deidre they want says somebody I, else to do it. I gave my daughter Outlander when she was Ah, in high see? <laughs> Which is kind of a language. romance novel. And it's interesting because I was thinking about this the other day. My 14-year-old daughter is the same age I was in high school uh-huh. when I went to a party and a senior boy stuck his tongue in my ear. Ew. I've never been more grossed out. <laughs> like it felt like a worm in my ear. And then I was thinking that can't taste good. Like that's so gross. It's salty. <laughs> right. And I'm like, that whole experience just freaked me out. And I thought, well, if I'm at a party at 14 and some boy is sticking his tongue in my ear, uh-huh. then my daughter's the same age. So why am I? It's not like I'm going to, you know, give her the <clears throat> the trashy romance novel that I might be reading myself. Right. But, but I, even not... if they did, like, what is yeah. go down the road? This is the thing. It's yeah. the conver- oh, conversation always goes, well, I'm not going to hand them the smutty, you know, right. The throbbing member kind of book. Right. Okay. And if you did, right. and if you did, we're talking about pubescent teenagers. Right. They can get horny looking at a light pole. Like, it's let's true. stop already. <laughs> it's not the book that's making them horny. It's their hormones yeah. that are making them horny. And I would much rather have yeah. my child, because they're always going to be my child, yeah. reading a book. Right. I would much rather have them reading a book. And I will say this, and I'm not yucking people's yum. If you watch a lot of pornography, do you, as long as it's not harming anybody. Right. But I would much rather walk in on my kid reading a book right. than watching pornography. Oh, totally. Yeah. And if that's and, the case, then yeah. let them read the friggin' book. Okay. In either, in either case, though, and it's funny, I remember my dad telling me this when I was a teenager, that the sex we see in movies or porn or right. books or whatever, whatever is not reality. 
Like that's not of how course, the, really, yes. but, but they don't know that. Right. And yeah. so I think it's important if you do, if you, you know, if they are reading the whatever smutty novel to say, and by the way, I was the one reading the smutty novel. Fabio's like, not showing up I on would, a horse cam. You know what I mean? No, like... he's not. I would sneak into my my mom's room and she had, was it Wifey by Judy Bloom? It was very, there were some very racy scenes. I would sneak in and I would grab that book and See? I would take it to my room. Yeah. And Kim's a totally functioning member of yeah. society, not a pervert, <laughs> right? I mean, kids want to read things and and you're really gonna pull books from kids these moms for liberty wackadoos like and i'm just gonna be crass here like you need to go get laid like just stop like there's something going on in your private life that this is what you're focused on or there's not enough happening in your private life that you're focused on this stuff let kids read books and gordon you're absolutely right it's the adults that have the dirty mind i mean it's as if, you know, the doth protest too much. It's like, how many smutty novels are you reading right now? Yeah. Or are you not reading them at all? And both are kind of nuts, right? It's just, it's insane. So, and we have to fight against these kinds of groups. We really do. They don't have the right. The, the woman in another video was saying, uh, we're a group that believes in parental rights. And let's hear it, people, because I say this all the time, which parents? Because I want my kids to have access to any book that they want to read, within reason, obviously. Uh, and by within reason, I mean, I don't want them to be able to pick up something that's going to teach them how to kill themselves or something, right? Like, I want my kid, if they're wanting to read a book, to have access to that book. And so they're not for all parental rights. They want to parent my child. And so again, the compromise here is this. This and really only this, if you don't want your child to read something, fill out a form at the beginning of the school year that opts your kid out of checking out any book they want. You first have to approve it. And if you don't want to do that, then you're just a lazy parent. Sorry, that's my opinion. Um, okay, let's, can we squeeze one more thing in? You know, let's do some headlines, Kim. And then I'm going to get to some of the warnings. <laughs> Warnings from airlines, the federal government about your car, and going to one of the happiest places on earth. And I'm putting that in quotes because it's not oh, that no. happy anymore. Yeah, a couple warnings for you. And then we're going to get into the toll lanes. All lane toll roads. It gets my blood boiling when I watched this news report. And I'll, I'll pause it at the line that pissed me off because this is what we've been trying to do. And they're stopping us from doing it. That's all coming up after some headlines. Now, from around the world to up your street, the Nikki Maduro Show presents News Czar Kim McAllister. Well, House Republicans are showing their support for Israel in its war with Hamas. House Speaker Mike Johnson and other GOP lawmakers held a news conference with families who have loved ones that are being held in Gaza. Florida Congressman Corey Mills said the Biden administration is not doing nearly enough to get captured Americans out of Gaza. Voters are going to the polls in 37 states today to decide some key races in Kentucky. Democratic Governor Andy Beshear up against Republican challenger Daniel Cameron. In Mississippi, it's Republican Governor Tate Reeves seeking re-election against challenger Brandon Presley. We said earlier he's a coven cousin of Elvis Presley. And we know also that in Ohio, abortion is on the ballot should they uh, write it into their state constitution or not. And so all of these races, they uh, the the thought is maybe an indicator of what's to come in 2024. Mm, yeah. Former President Trump is done testifying in his $250 million civil fraud trial in New York, where he called the proceedings a scam. <laughs> Trump repeatedly... Oh, not a witch hunt. Oh, he, no, he, he, it's a scam. Okay, it's a scam. He said okay. rigged to, you know, he says his right. cavalcade of things he uses. Trump repeatedly sparred with the judge as prosecutors pressed him on his financial records we uh, know that next up <clears throat> will be Ivanka Trump, and she is scheduled to testify on Wednesday. The NBA teams are off today as the league pauses for Election Day, interestingly. It's the second season in a row the NBA hasn't scheduled any games on Election Day in order to encourage fans to head to the polls. Nearly all teams will be back in action tomorrow with 14 games on the docket. Sony 
is pulling the plug on support for the social media platform X from its PlayStation video game consoles. Oh. The company said users will no longer be able to view or post content on X from PlayStation 5 or PlayStation 4 consoles. That starts November 13th. Sony didn't provide a reason for the change, but Microsoft dropped support from X for its Xbox video game console back in April. Heinz will launch a new pickle-flavored ketchup next year. I heard about this. I heard about this. And I love pickles. The condiment maker says pickle ketchup will combine the tangy, savory flavor of pickles with the unmistakable taste of Heinz ketchup. Heinz noted that a recent uh, Data Central report showed 73% of Americans enjoy the taste of pickles. Pickle ketchup will start to hit the stores and shelves in early 2024. I maintain this. If I want ketchup, I want ketchup. Right. If I want to add pickles, I'll I add pickles. some pickle relish. Why do I need to mix them up into one bottle? Because people are lazy. It's the same as that um, goober, the peanut butter and jelly that's all together in one jar. Laziness. Mm -hmm. Lazy, lazy. Uh, are you a, what's your favorite type of pickle? I like the Bubby sweet pickle. You like a sweet pickle. I mm -hmm. hate sweet pickles. Really? Ger I don't like gherkins. I don't like bread and butter, which mm. is the kind of sweetie p uh, pickles. Yeah. Uh-uh. I like that's what bread, I thought of bread and butter one. pickles. So uh, good. Oh but I God. also Every like a dill pickle. Like, I like all kinds of pickles. No, dill pickles is the only pickle. And maybe like a, d a spicy dill pickle. Like, they'll put some, you know, peppers or whatever mm -hmm. in the brine. Uh, but no, I cannot do. And it always gets me upset when I'll go to like a burger place or a sandwich place and i'll get a nice big sandwich and then the only pickles they have are like bread and butter i go no uh, give mm. me a good dill pickle i love dill so my brother-in-law works for the environmental protection agency oh Fed i didn't on the know federal that level. yeah he's a scientist and he had to go um i think he had to go review something somewhere where it was a pickle factory okay and he said if oh thank you oh my here's my bubby's pickles <laughs> my oh bubbies. um he said if i saw how pickles were made i would never want to eat another pickle because Why? they're in these open vats mm -hmm. and there's kind of bugs floating on the top in some cases i guess i don't know yeah but i mean i mean i'm not you can't okay. take away my enjoyment of bread and butter bubbies pickles. no and you know that they wash all the, you know the bugs aren't on there and again we're so separated from the earth and the things that create mm -hmm. like you know there's bugs in growing vegetables right growing the cucumbers that turn into the pickles yeah. and the brine and everything like that uh yeah um i swear you talk about pickles people have strong reactions i like dill and bread and butter but dill mostly sweet pickles are good in yeah. some things yeah i just don't like the sweet these are bread and butter chip pickles yeah no i love chip pickles because i can make um i hate to reach you ever have fried there, pickles but... do you like fried pickles oh i've never had a fried pickle you've it's never my... had a fried pickle who's my bubby's bread and butter pickle yeah it looks sweet and gross mm. um so good. <laughs> sweet and tangy all at the same time i don't like the sweetness it's like it's oh like a God. sugar it's gross Mm, you have to it. try fried pickles. Oh my God, they're so good with a nice dipping sauce. Mm, mm. But you have to use dill pickles for that. You have good eating down say. You've got fried deviled eggs and fried pickles. I don't know what's going on down <laughs> I there. I like things that are fried, apparently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dill only. Yeah, exactly. How can you see sweet? I could see it. I could see mm. it, Eric. Don't even worry about it. So good. <laughs> <laughs> a sad story for you. Oh, okay. Former child actor Evan Ellingston is dead at the age of 35. I didn't know who this person was. Mm, he passed away Sunday at his home in San Bernardino County. According to the local coroner's office, no cause of death determined yet. Again, his name is Evan Ellingston. Mm. Foul play has been ruled out so far. Ellingston, who hasn't been on camera for more than a decade, starred in My Sister's Keeper in 2009, and he was also well known for his role as Kyle Harmon on CSI Miami, along with guest appearances on several other shows since the age of 13. I guess he was found in a, a room, like a bedroom. Oh, that so, sucks. You yeah. know what I realized, um, just on a side note, I, I, it's sad that this guy, because I was looking at pictures of people. I just realized, again, every time I'm, I'm watching something, you guys have to go on the journey with me. So I'm watching Gilmore Girls. The guy, Logan, that's Rory's boyfriend, the rich guy, 
Mm -hmm. He's the actor in American Horror Story, the husband. If anybody's watching this season of He's American Horror lot. Story, I've been yeah. looking at this guy on Gilmore Girls, and I'm like, how do I know mm -hmm. this actor? And then it just, and then I Googled him. Honestly, I Googled him after I read that article about that guy because they, not that they look exactly alike, but there's a similarity there. Um, and I was like, oh my God. He looks really weird in American Horror Story, though. I liked him much better in Gilmore Girls. But anyways, yeah. just letting you guys know if you wanted the connection there. There it is. Chat GPT mm -hmm. is a year old and it has 100 million users. That's, yeah. a, that's you know, a lot of users. The whole chat GPT thing. Open AI held it? its first <laughs> developers conference, made some impressive announcements. The company revealed that after a year of operation, chat GPT has more than 100 million weekly users. The company also unveiled GPT-4 Turbo, calling it the most powerful AI chatbot yet. Mm. Okay. It's the demise Ooh. of all humanity, I guess, but there you go. Google Search and Chrome are getting new features, according to the Mountain View tech giant. Users mm -hmm. will now have tools to help find discounts. Among the oh. changes, search results are now designed to find products that are on sale. I so, like that. Yeah. I use um, so I use Google Flights, like Google, like the search for flights, because they search all of them pretty much, uh, just to kind of get a baseline. Mm -hmm. of how much things cost so I could see if I can actually afford to to do something or not but I I mean that's cool for discounts are you a coupon clipper though because even if the discounts there unless I'm getting imme it immediately or online it's not doing me any good so if I buy something online I'll always search for a coupon code because it's oh, yeah. silly not to like of I course. just open another tab yeah, yeah, yeah. and I search for you know what am I buying a, a homecoming dress at whatever store that I'm going to right. look coupon code for that store and often it will save me 20 or 30 percent right there right yeah if the coupon code works so sometimes, sometimes they do sometimes, yeah, sometimes they don't, don't. but yeah effort, I'm, though. I always got to try at least yeah, right absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you heard about this. It's been four years. It seems like longer, this story. This verdict mm. is in on a California boat tragedy that captured the nation. Yeah. The captain Ugh. convicted and facing up to 10 years in prison. A jury found the 69-year-old criminally negligent in the deaths of 34 people in Santa Barbara County. He, the captain, was the first to jump to safety instead of helping rescue passengers trapped below deck when that dive boat went up in flames in 20. 2019. The U.S. attorney said this could have been avoided had he simply performed the duties he was entrusted to carry out. The sentencing is set for February. And the they say what he was um, found guilty of is uh, manslaughter, Siemens manslaughter. Yeah. Yeah. It was a very tragic story. I don't I think they were thinking that it might've started with the plugged in cell phones or something like that. But I don't know if it's been definitive. I, I, I can't remember. I just always thought, and again, it's human nature to want to survive. I'm not knocking mm -hmm. the guy. Okay. But I thought you were supposed to go down with the ship. You're the last it's true. person off the so ship. So say you turn around and everything's on fire and there's no way to save anyone. Exactly. Do you then just burn up with everyone or do exactly. you Exactly. And that's, exa that's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, if, if I can't go down to where they're sleeping because it's in flames. Right. What am I supposed to do? Like, I don't know yeah. anybody that's, that literally could do it. Like, there is something in your body that wants you to survive, right? You're mm -hmm. just like, I can't go in there. Or everyone would run into a burning building, right? Or everybody yeah. would do that. But there's, it's, it's not easy to do something like that. Now, was there some other problem with the boat and, and he should not allow them to plug in? Who knows? But yeah. I always, you know, it's one of those things you hear about like the Titanic and things like that. You don't, you don't jump ship. You go down with the ship if you're the captain. Another know. insurance company is ending coverage in California. Farmers Direct Property and Casualties stopped Ooh. writing new policies in September when it gave up its certificate of authority. That includes home, auto, and renters. The company will continue serving existing company, uh, customers, but won't renew starting next month. This will <sighs> leave tens of thousands looking for a new provider, though most are expected to get offers under the same parent company. So this is my question for that. So they're not going to renew. So even if I have it, I won't lose it. But then when it's up for renewal, they're not going to renew me. You'll, you, or you'll probably get similar. You'll have to change 
to their uh, different company under their parent company umbrella. They need to get maybe. this together. I mm-hmm. mean, because it's not even just in, you know, high wildfire areas. They're leaving the state. And 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 if there's few um, fewer companies, there's less competition. Guess what's going to happen to the rates? It's insane. And they should not be able to do business ever again. But that's just me being pissed off. California moving on plans for the largest reservoir in almost 50 years. It is in Calusa County, about 70 miles north of Sacramento. Governor Gavin Newsom used his new power yesterday to help fast track approval. He said the goal is to give people access to clean drinking water and make the state more resilient against future drought. This reservoir would be able to hold enough water for cities and farms from the Bay Area to Los Angeles. Wow. Nice. Biggin. Yeah. And lastly, we'll end it on a positive note. It appears California's drought is finally over. Yay! Well, for now. (laughs) The latest map for now. The latest map shows the state is all clear minus two small areas at each end considered abnormally dry. And that's thanks to Mother Nature. Of course, we know the rains last season. First, millions got hit with a winter full of rain and snowfall due to several atmospheric rivers and storms. Then Southern California got drenched over the summer with the first tropical storm warnings ever for Los Angeles and San Diego. Now you could say that's a bad thing, climate change, what scary, you know, inclement weather. Or that it's a good thing that it brought us out of a drought. But uh, that's what we have. At least no drought for now. No drought for now is a good thing. But we need to get it together. We need, you know, the reservoirs like you're talking about. We need to plan for the future, people, because Mm -hmm. that keeps changing. This report is crowdfunded, which means we do rely on you. Please find us at the NikkiMadoroShow.com, where the Patreon and the PayPal links are located, and we do count on you for your support. I'm Kim McAllister. Kim McAllister, not Kimba. Kim (laughs) McAllister. I always sometimes, Kim McAllister. I'm Kim Kim McAllister on the Nikki Maduro Show. Thank you, Kimba. Um, Okay, so let's talk about some warnings that are coming from people. Uh, I guess this isn't necessary. I'm not going to start out with an actual warning warning. Uh, I don't know. This came out. When was this? Uh, The video came out on Monday. I feel like I read about this over the weekend, though. You know, it's a, life is a game of inches, as they say on any given Sunday, right? But when you're on an airplane, apparently these inches is really freaking matter. Have you seen the viral video between airline passengers over those inches? Put my seat back. I'm allowed to put my seat back. Oh gosh, this irate passenger laid into the person into the person seated behind her. She claims the woman tried pushing her seat upright the entire flight. The debate on the plane was just the beginning. The video quickly went viral and a bigger debate ensued in the comments. Some say it is rude to actually have the seat reclined the whole time. Others say if the seat wasn't meant to recline, it wouldn't be adjustable. Right. So, I mean, okay, there's a number of things that went wrong here. She's mad. She's, She's very mad. mad. Mm-hmm. Um, it, we should never let things get that. Okay, well, we all have our own debate. Thank you for that. Um, okay, now, Randy says, for Christ's sake, if you're on a plane, don't recline your seat. We're talking about that. Inches. We're not talking about sleeper chairs, right? Now, I understand. I want to get it correct. So how many inches do airline seats recline? So let's see. If if, a immediately inch or two. Most of them is about an inch or two. Okay? It's about an inch or two. So that much. Not even that much. Just enough. If it's that much. Mm Mm-hmm. Do you fall on the side of it's not enough to matter or it's not enough to recline? If you're sitting behind someone who reclines quickly and you have stuff on your tray table or, you know, your legs are crossed, right? And it's tight quarters already and they come slamming back without warning. The two inches. Okay. Sometimes two inches feels like a lot. Right. In those already cramped quarters. I, I, you know, I, then why I can't you recline? I, I think you can recline. I think you just have to, the polite thing to do is turn around and say, Hey, I'm, I'm going to put my seat back a bit. You I just do that. Like, 
I want to let you know. You do that. Or you eat. I kind of ease. A Thank you. Bit. That's what kind I do. I, I I press the button. I slow. I'm not going. Bam. Nobody. Yeah. Does. If you do that, you're an a hole, and you have bigger right. problems, right? No, you slowly do. But in all honesty, I'm not a big person, so yeah. I rarely recline my seat. Honestly, I rarely recline my seat. Mm-hmm. I don't. Maybe if I'm on an overnight flight, I think those two inches matter. But it, again. We're talking also, about two inches. I take note of who's behind me as well. If it's a right. kid behind me, I have less of a problem with it, right? If it because they don't need as much space. Right. But if it's a like a six foot three man that's a large person, I may be less inclined to recline because I know that person is already struggling for space. Uh, well, I don't know. Yeah, I remember I was in eighth grade. I was going to Washington, DC on my eighth grade Washington, DC trip, mm-hmm. and I was sitting next to my boyfriend, who at the time was a tall kid. He was like six feet tall. And the woman in front of him had reclined so much that he wasn't able, like he, she had already reclined, but she never moved it back up. He ended up getting like a Charlie horse in one of his legs, Ooh. like he, or something like a spasm. And he, mm-hmm. he like, he was like punching it. And he was in so much pain and I'll Ow. never forget it. And the woman got mad at him because of course he's just a kid. It's mm-hmm. kind of like trying to kick his leg a little bit to get the muscle to move. And I remember I'm sitting there. So I'm like, are you okay? Are you okay? And he's like, my leg, my leg. And he was really in a lot of pain. I I don't have that problem, right? Like I and now we know that can be blood clots. Deadly, yes, yeah, absolutely. So I just feel like it's only it's a game of inches. Don't be a butthead about it, right? There's this device that actually you could put on your seat on the seat in front of you that actually stops the seat from reclining. Really? Yeah. And you're supposed to like hand a card to the person in front of you that says, Hey, I've put the device or whatever. I don't know if it's legal or not, but there's this device that you can use. I would never do something like that. No, but again, that that would piss me off because if they, you know, at, at the, at the base of it, if they didn't want you to recline the seat, then they shouldn't have made the seats with the ability to recline. That's my point too. And whose fault is it? Is it our yeah. fault for wanting to recline or is it the airline's fault for cramming right. us in? Someone That's said right. earlier, like sardines. It's not yeah. my fault. I can't be on this long ass flight right. without a little bit of, of, of space. So yeah, just be mindful people of the people in front of you. All right. From airlines to inside your car. I don't do this. I don't know how many, maybe some of you guys know what they're talking about, but apparently the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is warning people to not customize their steering wheels. Um, Apparently the little rhinestone bezazzled ring that you put over the (laughs) logo or whatever, it could turn into shrapnel and, and give you serious injury or I guess kill you. Apparently, they, uh, the NH the NHTSA described a potentially dangerous product as a metal or plastic plate, usually covered with rhinestones or other shiny decorations with an adhesive bag that covers the vehicle's logo in the center of the steering wheel. I don't decorate my my steering wheel. I mean, I've maybe sometimes in other cars put a steering wheel cover on. Right. I've never put anything over the logo, but apparently it's become a thing. Oh, I've never seen that. I've never seen it either, yeah. but if you have one, that's the that's the warning from NHTSA that's saying, look, don't decorate it because when the airbag goes off, it's like shrapnel, let alone, remember mm. we had the airbag problem where it was literal shrapnel uh, killing people because of the airbag. Um, yeah, it's just, it's it just don't decorate anything that's going to be uh, in front of you. And then finally, the last warning, if you go to the happiest, quotes, 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 happiest place on earth, Go potty first. So apparently <laughs> there is a, an increasing number of re- of people reporting that people are pooping in lines for rides, like literally taking a crap on the ground and then leaving it there. That's so gross. Twice in the last month, posters on the Disney World subreddit commented in fury and horror about the cursed things they'd seen in line. And this person says, I'm in the queue for Rise of the Resistance. Someone let their kid take a dump on the floor and then just walked out and left it. Gross. Another person says, for the skeptics, this actually happened. Fun fact, this was one of three S-related incidents at Rise today. Less fun fact, I was here for all three of them. Oh, no. One person said, 
bodily fluids no longer bother me after working at Disney. Let's just say the attraction I work at has what the cast ended up dubbing the poop hall because of the amount of times guests have gone in there and pooped. We even put up a camera and it didn't stop us. So what's the solution here, do you think? Uh, do they need bathrooms in the lines if they're really, really long? I think so. Yeah, right? Like you. I was going to say, like, if you know that there's, I think this article said there's a poop hall. That's Yeah, that's just what yeah. I said. Yeah, the if poop you hall. know that people have to sit, use the facilities right about that point, then put a put restroom. a bathroom there. But mm-hmm. then, how long is the line going to be for the bathroom lot? You know what I mean? Like, right? Should it be right outside? I would even imagine if if it's so bad that they've dubbed it poop hall, maybe have the rope open right there, and there's a there's a bathroom on the other side that's monitored by someone, right? Mm-hmm. Like, okay, you can go that way. If there's a line, you know, people aren't cutting because God right. forbid that'll lead to a whole nother thing, right? right. And then. Or have it, it be at a way? place where the line doubles back so that person can get in their right back get in their back place in. and line yeah, after they something. But I mean, but I can't believe people are so gross. Like it's really the ride is more important to you than taking care of business. How Come do you on. drop trowel? I know we're talking about camping, but this isn't camping. How do you in, drop trowel when you in, know there's people right no. there and poop? Yeah. I mean, in I'm not that he is any people. Ew. No. Ugh. I I would have stage fright. I don't even know if I could go. How, do you, how are you that relaxed that you can poop in public like that? Like, I'm sorry, not to get all gross, but um, apparently some rides with notorious long lines like Flight of Passage or Rise of the Resistance usually have a restroom mid-queue. All you have to do is speak with the nearest cast member about where to find the closest bathroom. Even if you have to leave the line, you can politely explain your circumstance and ask to rejoin your party, obviously. Like, uh, if you looked at me and you're like, I have got to go to the bathroom and we've been in this line for an hour and we have like an hour left or whatever. Like, I'm like, go, dude, I'll be here. Yeah. I don't understand people that are like, well, if you leave, li-, you know, there's people like that, though. If you leave the line, then you leave the line and you can't come back in. No, no line cutting. I'm like, stop. I don't want you to poop your pants. Go to the bathroom. Come back. I got gotcha. you. Like, it's right. not that big of a friggin' deal. I swear to God. Um Exactly. Randy, you can just let somebody back in line if they have to leave for that. Jeez, how hard is it to be nice for people right, to people? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Uh, Jim says, Randy, you can't get in and out of the lanes after it goes inside at a certain point and it's only one more hour left. Well, obviously, if you talk to someone, you're like, I'm going to poop my pants. Mm-hmm. You got to do what you got to do. All right. You just have to. I don't All think right. I would even ask the person behind me if they would hold my spot. I would just leave. And who teaches their kids that that's okay? Who Gross. lets their kid? Dr- yeah. And honestly, if you have a problem with that, then you should just wear adult diapers, right? Yeah. And if your kid has to go to the bathroom and you don't just let them poop right there, the ride is not that important for the humiliation that's involved in all of that. I'm sorry. It's just not. Okay. So no pooping in line. I would tell the person, I'd be like, look, we're having an emergency. Hopefully there's more people in my party than just me and my kid or whatever. Like, so hopefully, yeah. And, and Spencer, right. Just poop ahead of time. I don't know how many times people poop in a day, but. I normally don't have to do it more than once. So there you go. All right. (laughs) Thanks for that. (laughs) (laughs) In case you guys wanted to know where to find me. It's usually the same point of the day. Um, Okay. Let's move on to another S situation. And that, of course, is driving around the Bay Area. Lori, I had seen this story, but thank you again for sending it to me so I could talk about it. We kind of touched on toll lanes yesterday. If they make every lane a toll lane, I'm out. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not driving to work anymore. I'm not doing any of that. So let me play you a little bit of this report from our friends at ABC seven, but I'm going to pause it. When a person says a line that just made the, the exact point that we had been trying to make since the beginning of COVID. Here we go. Play already. Damn it. Here we go. Driving on the freeway could cost you more than it already does. The Metropolitan Transportation Commission started a two-year study in 2022. It includes three proposals for charging drivers, one of which would add tolls to all lanes of many Bay Area freeways. On Tuesday and Wednesday, the MTC is asking for public input on pricing freeway travel. No, no. I don't think so. <laughs> no. An MTC. No. To emphasize. 
planning exercise, not a policy proposal. They say since the state has serious low emission targets, Californians should be serious about driving less. Yeah, that's where I'm going to pause it. We want to drive less. We have been telling you we want to drive less. Mm -hmm. You need to talk to companies that are making people come back. All right, let's watch a little. That, that, that line just pissed me off to no end. Every day I spend at least two hours and 20 minutes to go to work. Ugh. You know, come, go to work and come back home. Khan Nguyen purchased an electric vehicle specifically for his commute from San Jose to Foster City. He said if the freeway tolls plan does come to fruition, hopefully drivers with EVs can get a discount. Hopefully they will be more lean in, you know, on, on the freeway. It'll be great for us and, um, you know, less less travel, the less better. MTC says freeway congestion is jumping back to pre-COVID levels. Their freeway pricing study aims to reduce travel times, encourage transit use, no. and generate money for road safety there improvements. In 2022, MTC spokesperson John Goodwin said the study will address how new fees would impact low-income drivers. How do you make sure that the burdens are not borne disproportionately? Yep by low-income people. MTC will be holding two workshops virtually. Bay Area residents can weigh in on the trade-offs between driving and taking transit. We're already paying so much to live here. Mm -hmm. MTC says any changes wouldn't happen before 2035. All right, look, this will never fly. I know they're like, it's just, a, it's not a policy decision. It's Why are you researching something that's not going to happen? Why are you wasting time and money unless you really thought it was an option. And all toll road is bull crap. When we have not designed our cities, nor do we give companies any incentives to let us stay home, drive less. I can't drive less. I have to go to work, take public transit. Public transit doesn't go to where I need to go or run the times I need to have it. I'm a perfect example of that. Would I love to take BART? Oh, Bart to San Jose is coming. My ass, it's coming. You've been telling me it's coming forever. <laughs> All right? Like, don't even start with me on that. Okay? So they keep telling us to do the things, but don't set up the systems to make it possible. Like, look, if I could, if Bart was close, I'm going to be completely honest. If Bart was close and it took me to where the new uh, KCBS buildings were, which is like mm -hmm. right outside of it, done. Done. I could sleep. I could read. I could prep. I could do all kinds of things. Done. I would do it. If Caltrain ran 24 hours, Caltrain ran 24 hours, I would do that. Well, I mean, probably not because Caltrain is nowhere close to the new studios. But you see what I'm saying. I'd be more inclined yeah. to, let's say that way. It, it, exactly. Bart San Jose, billions over budgets, decades away from how I'm not holding my friggin' breath. It's ridiculous. And they keep putting the onus on us. How about this? Like you ma make public transportation better and cheaper. And low-income people should not be penalized, but they will be. Low-income people work in areas often far away. And I'll also say this, where they need their car because they have a bunch of stuff that they have to do for work. So it's not feasible. And like you said, Kim, at the beginning, we already paid for these roads. Yeah. yeah. These you are can't make our me pay roads. For it twice. You're making me, everybody has their hand out for more. Ugh. You know, I can't. I can't do more. I you've I can't already do more. I already you and you've already done you have the taxes that you say you earmark, you've the the, the the gas tax that you say is going to the roads. Right. You have the you, the bridge tolls that you say is going to road construction projects. What else do you want from me? Yeah. They want Knock all of our off. money. And in that in that how that woman said it's like it's already so expensive to live here. So now I have to commute far because housing prices are insane. And now you're going to charge me to drive? Like, exactly. It's They're chipping away at the reasons to be here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not leaving anytime soon. I don't want to leave at all. But I mean, if you're going to make it where I can't even afford to get in my car right. because I can't afford the toll on the road I already paid high taxes for, you've gotta be freaking kidding me right now randy makes a really good point about the, some of the roads in illinois and indiana and in the midwest in general are all lane toll roads and that's true but i would argue 
Are they also then, you know, taxing the gas for road? Are they taxing bridges? Are, are they, they such a high tax state? I don't know, you know what the taxes are. I'm not there, taxing yeah. bridges, but are they taking my tolls? Are they doing all these other things? And is it a, a lot cheaper to live back there? I mean, I don't know how much more they can exact from Californians before right. we're like, you know what? You're, you're charging me incredible property taxes to be here. You're just, it's... You, it's incredible. I don't even know how we're supposed to then, what is it, $5 every time you want to drive on the freeway? Right. No. And and the tolls are not cheap. No. I mean, when I see them, when I'm driving from, you know, usually I hear we'll you back elsewhere. home. Yeah. I was yelling. He's saying, calm down mm. to me. So whatever. Uh, I would be, if there's anything to yell about Square, it's the gouging of Californians. I really do think that my, uh, my emotion is warranted. But again, the tolls from San Francisco to San Jose, because when I drive up there early in the morning, there's no tolls because it's too early. But I wouldn't be surprised if they saw that. Um, it can range. I mean, from a, like a dollar to a couple of bucks. And then if you keep going on and you stay on the roads longer, it can add up. It, yeah. It's it's and it's not justified. That's the whole thing. It's like, well, we want you to drive less. And you want me to a, drive less? Set up the yeah. set up the city so I can. Get they don't a want us to drive prices. at all. They they yeah. don't want us to drive at all. Do then? Do they have a sad little lane that's you know jam packed with traffic and all pothole pocked for yeah. the people that can't afford to drive in the toll lane? Or no, they're all right. the lanes are you have to pay something. Yeah, um, it's it's not feasible. And I'm going to say this. If they designed the cities from the get-go where, and, and I know people don't necessarily like all of the new housing and everything, but the point is, is if we can build more housing near where people live and actually make it affordable, because it's not, you can't charge people $3 million and be like, why don't you work where you live? Well, because I can't afford that either. Um, but if you did, that'd be one thing. But the fact that it's not set, the, the cities and the system isn't set up in this way. And yet you're looking at us like, well, make it work. Screw you, make it work. Yeah, Jim, you can take the bus from San Jose Shark Arena to Bar to San Francisco for a small eleven dollars and three hours. Yeah, not not happening. It's not happening. It's 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 absolutely insane. And, and yeah, I would, I would oh, argue God. that you're driving to, to San Francisco sometimes at three four in the morning. And so it's not right? even available. So how do you even? You can't. You can't. Yeah. I literally can't make it work. I literally have to drive. And now I have to drive and then I have to pay the toll. And if you make it all lanes, I can't even not. Now, again, I don't think this will ever pass, but this is they need to start redesigning the system now and give incentives to companies to allow people to work from home. Brian says taxes used to be for getting things done. Now the tax goes for administration of the work and they need more money to actually fix things. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. And and it's when people complain about the taxes in California for things like this, it's totally warranted. Uh, Sandy says San Jose is always building housing nowhere near public transit. Well, I know some um, new housing developments that are close to public transportation. And I'm really talking about light rail and I'm really talking about downtown. You know, the Google village uh, is going to be near the Deerdon station whenever that thing gets done. Right. Um, it's just, it's going to take time and it's not going to be tomorrow. Nancy says, I was in D.C. last week. Toll lanes are expensive, but gas in Northern Virginia was $3.15, which to me is still very expensive. I'm sorry. Um, Spencer says, Caltrain has always not been good. I think Caltrain is good and smooth. It's just you got to get to it, and mm -hmm. it doesn't run 24-7. So if you work really, really early in the morning, then what's your option, mm -mm. right? What's your option then? And it, it, so it's just, it's, it's unfair. It's always going to disproportionately impact the lower income people and it's, and it's not going to happen. And it's not as if Californians don't want it to happen. I think that if you polled most Californians, they do want fewer people on the road, right? They yeah. do want, you know, more electric cars as long as there was a, a place to charge them and it was still environmentally friendly. There was a poll by the LA times and the UC Berkeley Institute of governmental studies it found 56% of registered voters would be comfortable with things like wind turbines in their communities. Uh, solar farms had stronger, which because I think we're just more used to it. 69% of people wanted solar farms. You know, it's not as if we're opposed to these things. We just have to make it environmentally friendly in the right locations. 
and 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 economically feasible for people, right? So if you want me to go all electric, you got to get PG and E under control, right? Uh, or you have to find green energy and those sorts of things. You can't promote with one and take away with the other. It it doesn't make any sense. It absolutely doesn't mean make any sense. Jim, the Google Village is not being canceled. The company that was the developer is not the developer anymore, but the project is still going forward. So I actually just had a conversation with someone that would it's connected to the developer. And they're like, no, it's still happening. They just aren't using the same developer. They're still going to do it. And they're slowing it down. Yeah. It is not moving full steam as quickly as it was before, but that doesn't, that's the sign of the times and COVID and everything like that. And I'm, I'm actually all for it. Again, if you're going to build something with affordable housing, with jobs, with those sorts of things, and people can get jobs and not commute and they stay off the freaking roads, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Um. So yeah, I just, I, I don't know. Yeah, pg e blows. Uh, our rates are going up. The toll roads are going to probably grow. Uh, they don't want us to drive. And yet if we don't drive, then they don't get as much money from the gas tax. So they're going to we're going to get screwed both ways. You know, it, it, it's just it's just going to have it's just going to happen. Mm -hmm. And and there's really no way we can get around it. It really I don't I, besides leaving for other states. And that's what no, people are I don't saying. Do that. So I guess we just come up with a way not to drive. <laughs> and that's what they wanted it all along. But they right? don't create they don't create the incentives to work from home, right? Mm -hmm. They don't make it so you can make ends meet in this high cost of living area. Right. Easy. Okay, so I'm not going to drive to work. Well, then I have to be able to work from home. Oh, well, you mm -hmm. can't work from home because the companies want you in the office. Well, okay. Well, that doesn't help me at all. Like it, it's again, mm -hmm. the system is not set up for how they want us to behave right? They want you to go all electric cars, uh, but there's not en enough charging stations, right? Or the mm -hmm. charging stations are, are, are powered by, you know, or they a change, generate a gas powered generator. It's like, or they change the rules as far as, you know, incentives for putting solar panels on right, your roof exactly. that would help you power your, your electric vehicle that they want you to have. They make it harder instead of easier. And, and I don't, and I don't understand why they have to do it that way. But it's the way the system, it's the way our cities have been designed from the very beginning. You know, when you mention places like, let's just say New York, which is obviously in the United States, but their subway system is awesome. Yeah. But it was built that way. The city was built on top of it that way. It's like we're working backwards. We've designed the city with a bulk of the high paying jobs in one high cost of living area. Mm -hmm. And then all of the housing, the suburbs, very far away. And so people can only afford the housing very far away from the high paying jobs. So they have to commute, but they don't want us driving in, but then they don't want us working from home. It just, it, it, it makes it, it makes it difficult. It makes it nearly impossible. Yeah. And so the, the criticisms are, are valid. Absolutely. Making, uh, making it way too difficult to make ends meet. All right. Um, okay. So that's our show tomorrow. I, I, I want to get into a bunch of different things tomorrow. I wasn't able to get to the story. Are you guys, I don't, I know it's like some Hollywood stuff, but I wanted to get into the debate over what does it mean to assist somebody, to be an assistant, to be an admin, administrative or an executive assistant. Have you followed the Robert, Robert De Niro case? Have you followed this at yeah, all? I've been watching it. Mm -hmm. It is. If it wasn't Hollywood, it's absolutely hilarious. But this one point kind of stood out to me is when you have an assistant and they work very closely with you, does the line between personal and professional blur into where it becomes inappropriate? And I would say inappropriate on both sides because mm. in the Robert De Niro case, and I know it's Hollywood and stuff, there's this whole back scratching thing that's absolutely hilarious. But then on the other hand, there's also the relationship aspect of how this assistant viewed her relationship with right. the actor and how that kind of blurred. So <laughs> we'll talk a little about that. Uh, I, you know, I don't mean to laugh about it, but it's pretty funny. Uh, we'll get into parenting. Um, gender disappointment's been in the news. I don't care. I never cared about the gender of my child. I did not find out about the gender of my child beforehand, but I do know people that went through gender disappointment when they found out what they were having. Mm, yeah. And is it valid? Are we allowed to be disappointed um, 
and yet still totally be happy about, you know, having said child, but just not really happy about the type of or the gender of the child mm. that we're having. It's a hard question because it's supposed to always be a happy thing. And I know some people are like, mm, I have six girls. I really, really wanted that boy. Oh, you know, God, it's got to be hard. I, I was I would say I was more nervous when I found out I was having a boy. Really? Because I just didn't know what to do with the boy. I had a sister growing up. Ah. You know, I had a, my first child was a girl. And so I I was ner nervous about, well, okay, how, how do you mother a boy? Right? Is this going to be different? And isn't it so yeah. awesome, Kim? It's really isn't awesome. It so yeah. I, was, I wasn't concerned about having a boy or a girl. Yeah. I just, after having a girl, I thought I was going to have another girl. I just right. did. Uh, I didn't find out what I was having beforehand, beforehand, so I was really, really excited. But it's different. You know, the... The concerns you have for raising a girl versus the concerns you have with raising a boy are different. Mm -hmm. And so we'll get into that. In addition to everything happening tomorrow, Ivanka Trump is supposed to be testifying. So we'll, of course, be keeping our eye on that as well. Big thank you to Doug, who gave us a $20 donation, oh, a super thank sticker you, Doug. Yeah. to our super chat. And then Harry always starting us Yay. off really early in the show with a $5 donation. Uh, thank you guys so much. Again, please support the show. Sign up on our our monthly Patreon. It's simple to find. Just go to the Nikki Maduro Show .com. Our Patreon link is right there. And we really do need you guys to support the show so we can continue doing this for many, many years. Click a thumbs up as well. Make sure you are subscribed to the show and hit that bell so you don't miss a moment of the show. Uh, stay right here, though. Kim McAllister filling in for Mark Thompson and then yep. with John Daly for the After Party Live. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Nikki, you're all so awesome. You sprout like a beautiful blossom. You're all so the best. I really can't rest. You're all so awesome. <laughs> wow. Okay.